What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of RimWorld. Now we have started again, this is episode 5, but this time we mean business. Now the, uh, the whole purpose of this series is to beat Winston Waves, uh, that is 100 waves of course, and then we will escape the planet using the spaceship and there's some waves there. Now, while we get straight into the basics of what the map looks like and where I want to build, I'm looking there, you can see it's not the best map for building a hidey base. But we can make the kill box funnel everyone into our, uh, where we want them. There are insects on this map, so we've got to be careful we don't send anybody into those as well. Or allow them in to get the jellies. So the plan is simple, build a base, build a kill box that will take in the waves. I expect that we're going to be seeing attacks in the region of two to 400 enemies at a time. Um, if it gets higher than that, I will have to install a mod that compresses them. Basically, it gives you less people, but they're a lot stronger. Just to save it from stopping the game from playing altogether. The way it works is for the first 20 waves, they in the power increments by about one and a quarter, so a quarter each wave. From 20 to 50, it then goes 1.5 times. Um, and at 50, wave 50, the cap difficulty is increased. Now, the raids that come in are allowed to go up to 25,000 points, which, again, is about 400 people, depending on what they have. But then for every 10 raids after that up to 100, it will increase by 10,000 points. So obviously wave 51 will allow 35,000 points, wave 61 will be 45,000. So potentially up to wave 100, you, you could see 1,000 enemies if the computer can handle it, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, the main strategy I've got for defending against such ridiculous amounts of hordes of people is Rimatronics. It, for me, is my favourite option for building defences with the Teslas, the Obelisk Towers, the Laser Towers, and all the various different other tools that they can provide. Even the nuclear missiles that you can use to wipe out settlements that are bothering you, or the side quests where it says that you've got a sunblocker nearby you can just drop a nuke on them now of course that's a lot of research away and there is also a nuclear reactor that comes along with that that does work and provides much enough power to power any base of this size and, and end game but again a lot of research a lot of resources required so it's not a broken mod it's a very well balanced mod in my opinion but it's great fun to do also along with that there is Rim Factory added too. Rim Factory allows us to automate everything by the end and I mean everything. So all of the crafting, the collecting the corpses, the collecting the resources, collecting any drops from the, the battlefield, from the kill box and processing them accordingly or deleting them should you wish. So if you're interested in seeing that and fully automating RimWorld very much like I like to play Minecraft with fully automate it. Um, then do subscribe to continue this one now the mod itself I believe is fixed no um, quantifying changes were made really just that the settings were set up before I started now if you're having any problems with it let me know I can put them settings in the description but I don't want to confuse people by doing that without your request now to the game at hand we are starting again so you can see I've built a very Odd shape I don't know I, I never really have a, a, a way to go I like to just do random shapes when I start and move out from there and make it a bit organic and sp as opposed to just having the same setup the idea here is that this building on the right is going to be for the kitchen and as you can see there I'm seg segregating that so the top part is the kitchen the bottom part will be the fridge or freezer as soon as we can get the abilities to do such a thing uh, starting off we'll have to use the very basic wooden coolers that just uh, create evaporation to cool down the room they drop it down to about 14 15 degrees so that's useful it will slow down the rotting but not stop it and on the left hand side here is our research room along the top obvious that is the bedrooms and then the main massive room in the middle is for everything else likely storage crafting and the like the aim of course is to have much bigger rooms than we need 
uh, on this playthrough, and I know it's the same, it's the same season, we haven't changed anything. Um, but I do want loads of researchers as well. Instead of having one or two, I want to have like four or five. And they each have their own desk, so that when I ask them to research, research something, it will be done pretty quick. Chucking down the very first grow zones there on that fertile land, just to get that speed buff of 150%. So 50% faster growing times uh, until we can get to tilled soil where it gives us 200%. Now, there is some changes to the mods happening. Not too regular, but reasonably regular, especially for when I'm setting these up. Now, the description does have the mod list that I am using. But remember that it is fully up to date. So even though this is the first video for this next playthrough... Um, there will likely be some mods that you won't see in here because, of course, I'm playing with them in the future. Any issues or comments, though, please let me know and we can go through that. It shouldn't affect your gameplay because as I'm adding mods, they're more for quality of life or they are advanced um, in the future sort of mods where you, you know we're near the research level of them anyway, so it shouldn't matter. Now, ideology is the same. The anomaly settings are the same, though I have changed it. Instead of having that plinth, the building that we looked at on the map and had to keep going and researching it, I've done the other option, which allows us to, instead of having a solid object that we research, we get waves of anomaly mods and we have to kill, fight, research those as we move forward. Sounds a bit more exciting for me. Uh, it's supposed to be... an I'm not sure if easier is the right word, but less complicated. Let's say it that way. However, there are some screechers that are very painful to play against because they keep stealing your colonists and making them go insane. But yeah, we'll we'll get around to that. And eventually we'll have robots aiding us as well and various other things. The way I do like to play this is you start off as normal and it's the same. And I know I use Minecraft as a good example, but it's just... I think that is what gave me this sort of playthrough style. You start off basic, you do everything micromanagey and you manually do everything. And you eventually make it that the people are not irrelevant because they do have tasks or they are good for fighting or going on caravans. But they do get to relax in the future. Stay in the house, do a lot of recreation and just be happy. Have children and let the base do its own thing. Again, this map isn't great for building a base like I want we are going to eat into that mountain certainly above it massively um, and the size of the base will will I would expect by the end be a good third if not a half of the map very quickly going to block out the areas where the insects are because there's no way our guys will be able to survive that the quickest way to do that is to go around using your zone tool Select all of the areas where you don't want your guys to go, i.e. around the insects, like this. And then when it actually comes to the management screen, you can just invert it, which means that they're allowed to go everywhere but them areas. Because usually you can't do that by default. Just looking, you can see there's no insects in that area, although it does look like an insect place. We want to make sure that they don't. And then you go to the zone. Uh, it's actually area 2 and then you just click invert and that will make all of the areas where insects are not allowed and of course everywhere else allowed and that way your guys don't go and get the insect jelly or any random j goods that are mined by the insects you don't want your people going into them They this stage in the game it's just not worth the risk also if you get robots um, and anything like that make sure you do the same because the robots are really crap at fighting too. Funny enough there, you saw somebody go in, not one of ours, that was a random person, and they got obliterated immediately, and that was my point. It's a very good point to make, actually, because that proved it. That wasn't planned. Um, but that's what you don't want to happen. You don't want your guys going in there because they'll get annihilated. And then you'll have to send somebody in to try and rescue them if they do survive, and they likely will die too. And before you know it, your three become none. And here's, here's our first anomaly attack, obviously separate to the waves. Remember that although you are playing on Winston Waves, and it will give you guaranteed waves every X amount of days, what is, I think, 5 for us up until wave 50, and then from wave 50 it drops to 4, 
and likely down to 3 2 1, depending on um, how we go with the settings. These guys, you can kill them. I'm not sure if you can capture them. It doesn't give me the option to. Reasonably easy to kill because they're so slow because they're crawling along the floor. But this is the first anomaly thing that we have. Again, just because we're doing Winston Waves, you will see other things as well. You will get animal attacks. You will get other random raids, mech clusters, and various other events that are on the map, or on the world map, sorry, that do things like block the sword and... EMI dynamo that stops all your electric and all that crap, which is actually quite catastrophic if you are running an automated base that relies on a lot of power. Just spoiler there, that is like almost a losing game event. You may have to subscribe to see it though. Basic things, as always, some mining happening there. Nice big clutch of steel. So we'll get that. Cleaning up the floors that was put down before, and that will give us some free resources. Of course, our first electricity is going to be wind turbines. Now, they are very unreliable, but they work. The best thing to do to make sure that you get everything out of them and stop any crap from blocking them and ruin their efficiency like trees is to use the areas around them as fields. Pretty sure I didn't invent that. That's been done many times before. And then from there, we'll go solar panels. And hopefully after that, we'll then look at nuclear. I'm not I'm not going to bother with the wood generators or anything like that because they're just it's just not worth it. That building there, you can see I've silhouetted but not actually started building yet, is a prison because we do need to start getting a few extra people. I'm not sure how many I want. It's not going to be huge. We're not this is this playthrough isn't going to have 30 to 50 colonists it should only need 5 to 10 because the whole per point is that we automate things and things are done for us and our guys just manage the things that we need to do manually and the research because of course you can never automate that to my knowledge first raid here now first wave should I say only 3 people I'm not going to prat about we, we don't have a kill box so for these I'm just going to send my guys out and take them on directly. Of course, they are melee, so it sucks to be them a little bit. I have got my one guy, Pex. He is a melee character. But for now, he doesn't need to get involved. We'll just kite them. And allow them to just do their own thing. It's one-on-one -on -one there. I'm not too worried. And then we get our waves too. Also, I didn't know there are legendary rewards on that as well that come up with red icons that are OP as hell. Uh, Heal it makes serums, loads of gold, silver, and stuff like that. So watch out for those. The percentage on them is very, very low, of course, but it does happen. Um, and they are quite nice to get as an option. Also, the other thing that's nice to get is delayed waves, especially when you're working on specific plans of... Um, like you, 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 stuff that you need to do takes so long, especially Rimatronics. With the amount of research there, you're not going to be getting a very good kill box for a very long time. And the turrets that are provided by the game, when you get to them, they get blown up very easily. Oh, and never build them together because they blow each other up. And then lastly, you can see I've just chucked in some doors there to get them rooms ready to go for the future. And the three in the end room are for a hospital. Because what I want my guys to be rescued automatically, it is an option. And then obviously having many doctors is another option too. Uh, loads of doctors and loads of researchers. So that I don't have to micromanage this character with this illness and that character with that illness. Of course you always have to at the start, it's just part of the game. Where you look, who's going to die first and medicate them. But the idea I'd like is that if we have three people downed, that we have three doctors that can work on them individually. Okay, so push you forward a little bit. We can see we've got our research lab finished with a torch, of course, because light matters. Light over all of the creative items, researching, and any of the productions will increase the speed of them. Why are you in there? Not one of ours, so I'm not too worried, but look at that aiming. I mean, the one thing about this game I've never understood is why are they so bad at aiming? I've never used a gun in my life. Uh, I'm English, as you probably can tell. 
so we don't have guns. But I'm pretty sure I can shoot within a few feet of a target instead of shooting 30 feet to the left or right. You're down and you're not going to get rescued by me, so either crawl out of there or die because we can't go in there. We blocked because we're sensible. Or am I going to manually just go in and rescue them because I'm that kind of guy? I am, and that was lucky. It's all right. They'll go into the hospital anyway. Uh, this, the centre room there is currently a walkthrough instead of a bedroom. I didn't think that through when I built it in, and to be honest, it's saved them a lot of time than having to walk all the way around, so... For now, it'll, it'll do. Um, for them to get to the prison and then for them to get behind the base to where the windmills are and, of course, then the farms. I don't want to have to walk the ways round. Now, I have blocked it off. I am telling it to deconstruct that for now. And remember, for those that don't use kill boxes very often, you need to have your door open. So if you build your kill box in front of your base like I'm going to do, the door that goes into that main room where all of your items are stored make sure you hold it open that way the raiders are more inclined to actually walk through the kill box to get to those goods to steal or destroy them or if you leave the door shut then they have an equal opportunity to just go around the back of your base and set fire to your walls or just smash through the walls in a place where your kill box isn't and then facing sort of two three four hundred people with only five or six ain't gonna end well there's no amount of uh, um, mods, I don't think, that could make you 4v400 work. Unless there's like a Sparta mod. Well, they lost, but yeah. Okay, so nice progress. The other room was a prison. The outside room I've made into a power storage room. So four batteries in there. Finally finished those, so that's good. Table in the main room as well. That eventually will turn into a storage room, but also, as I said production room and then recreational room for the internal stuff we have now a cooler for the fridge which is well now a freezer dropping that down to negative 19 degrees which always seems to be my preferred setting now i am going to start setting some of the roles because their moods are affected by the lack of so if you don't have roles um, that they they use specifically the leader and the uh, religious guy then they will have mood debuffs there is also the option to have a sharpshooter which is a, a shooter that has better accuracy and a fighter which is melee as well but you don't have to have those for this group of people you just need to have the leader and the spiritual leader I'm going to get them all in as we go, though I do make a mistake because one of them, I can't remember which, but I think the shooter, no, sorry, not the shooter, the religious leader, it basically stops them from being able to do all of the tasks, so they're not allowed to, yeah, we're doing it over a corpse, that's gross, so they're not allowed to, they, they can't work after the fact, which is useless when I've only got three people. And then just pushing a little bit further on into the progression. You can see I've just pushed to the left there of the base. A wall as well to protect our flank. That's just in case we get any raids coming in from the top left of the map that can spawn. They should still want to walk around to the front. Because there's no wall in the way. Obviously the door is closed at the minute because with waves of four, three, four, five people it's really irrelevant. But as soon as they start growing that door there in the centre will be opened the research room you can see i am extending that as we speak and more bedrooms because we have now seven people one of which is a googly a, a ghoul type thing it's a bit pointless it can't do anything but fight and it can't hold a weapon in terms of any description so even though it has a range skill it can't use a ranged attack so it's only melee, so I'll just send it in and use it as a decoy. It, really, I'm not... I don't think it's wasting food or anything, but I just don't want it on my uh, colonist bar, to be honest. If it could at least do a bit of cleaning or something, it would be allowed to stay, or at the very least hold a gun or a bow, but it can't do either of those things, so it is just meat at the minute. 
And then as we let the guys put together the finishing touches for the base, as we know for this episode anyway, the extension to the research bay there being completed and the room's already finished. Get some lighting in and stuff just to make sure everybody's got what they need now. Make sure I'm putting double beds in all of the rooms because when I do single beds, I always get a relationship and then they start bitching and moaning that they want to sleep together. So if I start with double beds, they can do what they like. I don't care. As it stands, though, we do now have a completed structure for what is the end of this episode. And hopefully, if you're joining along, you've got somewhere close as well. At the minute, though, the waves really aren't that difficult, so I don't expect anybody's been wiped out yet. Though when we start getting to waves 10 to 20 and certainly 20 to 25, that's where you'll be determined as to your skill level, I think. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like and any comments are welcome. As always, subscribe so you don't miss any others. We are going to achieve this together this time. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.